Hello, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach and a host of the Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, I'm going to share something with you. Let me be crystal clear to leave an everlasting impact upon you. Imagine, just imagine being buried alive. You're in a coffin, but you know you're not dead. You don't know how to get out of that coffin. You think maybe if I lift the lid, I'll get out. But the enormous weight upon the lid prevents you from lifting the lid. You then try banging on the lid to maybe unsettle the dirt, and somebody might notice and start digging their way down towards you. You just think you're going to die. Usually, though, people don't think about death when they're habitually abusing drugs and alcohol. In order to feed an addiction, you have to be great at repressing the fear of death. I often ask you, my audience, never cross your mind while you're abusing drugs and alcohol that maybe, just maybe you might overdose and take something away that God had given you called life. And if that's not selfish enough, what about taking your life away from the people that love and need you most? Your mother, your father, your brother, sister, husband, wife, children, and grandchildren. With this, let me leave one last thought. Don't be like the person that I'm just uh, talking about that went to their grave without seeking help. Pick up the phone and call 844-405-HELP, and I promise you I'll help you take your life back. For your life is gone. People like Larry Geis, addiction recovery coach, life coach over 30 years, will take you from your addiction to your recovery, from your self-esteem to raising it, to you, from your depression to happier times. Give them a call at 516-458-2741 or www.odysseyconsultant.org Larry Geist from the Geist Academy 516-458-2741 Folks, instead of taking when you take your slippers off at night instead of putting them at the edge of your bed, bed stick them way under your bed when you wake up in the morning you get to see the water fall in the stream that is the time when you drop to your knees to go and get those slippers because they're under your bed at night put them by your uh, put them under your bed in the morning drop to your knees and retrieve them I call that uh, while you're on your knees, knee mail, K N W E mail, it's your communication line between you and God. That is the time when you should be asking God for guidance, direction, forgiveness, and mercy. Thanking Him for having a home, food, relationship, health. That is the time that you should be talking to God each and every day. Knee mail, K N W E mail. Put your slippers on and walk with God 24 7, starting today. Tonight, put those slippers in the, under your bed. In the morning, go and drop to your knees and retrieve them. Today, I want to talk about uh, positive self-image and self-esteem. Improving your self-image. Improving your self-image, like improving any skill, takes time and practice. Developing good self-esteem. Let's move this up a little bit. Involves encouraging a, um, a positive but realistic attitude towards yourself and the world around you and appreciating your network I mean your worth not your net worth but your worth while at the same time behaving responsibly towards others self-esteem isn't as self-absorbed it's self-respect by working from the inside out focusing on changing your own way of thinking before changing the circumstance around you you can build your self-esteem the goal of positive thinking is to give yourself a more positive self-concept while seeing yourself honestly and accepting yourself and removing the internal barriers that keep you from doing your best. Positive thinking. There are many ways a person can change negative thoughts into self-criticism uh, and self-criticism to more realistic and positive thoughts. Focusing on all of them at once may be a little bit overwhelming, but focusing on a few at a time and reminding yourself of these positive approaches regularly can change your self-esteem. I'm, I'm just waiting to... Uh, as you become more comfortable with each and every new way of your thinking, for example, learning not to apologize or accept blame for other people's anger, you'll be stronger and that will build your self-esteem. Try adding new positive thoughts and strategy to your daily activities. Positive thought of strategies. Avoid exaggerations. Correct your internal voice when it exaggerates, especially when it, uh, it, it, it thinks about negative thoughts. Try to avoid thinking in extreme terms. I always make the mistake, or I'll never get the promotion type of thought. Nip negative thoughts in the bud. Sometimes putting a stop to negative thinking is as easy as that. The next time you start giving yourself an internal uh, brow beating, tell yourself to stop it. If you saw a person yelling insults at another person, you would probably tell them to stop, wouldn't you? Why do you accept the behavior from yourself? 
accentuate the positive instead of focusing on what you think are negative qualities, accentuate your strengths and assets. Maybe you didn't ace that test you were studying for all that time, but maybe your hard work and uh, pre perseverance led to a better grade than you would have had had you not studied. Maybe you felt nervous and self-conscious when giving a presentation at work, but maybe your boss and co-workers respected you for getting up and trying at least. Accept the flaws and be a human being. Maybe you did get nervous and, and blow that presentation. So what? Talk to your boss about what went wrong. Try to address it, an error and move on for a better future and a better presentation next time. All people have flaws and make mistakes. You and I both. Your boss, co-workers, friends, family, postman, congressman, and favorite movie star all have made mistakes. They've been, they're forgiven themselves, so can you. Accept that you're not perfect. Accept imperfections. Perfection is a high goal to aim for. You don't need to start there or even end there. Make uh, doing your best your ideal goal. What more can you realistically do? Focus on what you've gained from the process and how you can use it in the future. Avoid, avoid focusing on what doesn't uh, get done or should have been done differently. Allow yourself to make mistakes and then forgive yourself. Try laughing instead of criticizing. Don't bully yourself. Should have, could have, would have. Try not to constantly second guess yourself. Criticize yourself for what you should have done better or expect too much from yourself. Stop criticizing. Don't put standards on yourself that wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't put on anyone else around you. It's great to want to do well, but expecting yourself to be perfect, which is impossible, and then punishing yourself when you fail is a vicious cycle. Using expressions like, I should have, is just a way of punishing yourself after the fact. Replace criticism with encouragement. Instead of nagging or focusing on the negative in yourself and others, replace your criticism with encouragement. Give constructive criticism instead of being critical. Maybe if I tried to do blank next time, it would have been better instead of I didn't do it right. Compliment yourself and those around you and, uh, and what you have achieved, achieved. Well, we may not have done it all, but we did a pretty damn good job trying and we almost succeeded. Don't feel guilty about things beyond your control. You are not to blame every time something goes wrong or someone has a problem. Apologizing for things and accepting blame can be a positive quality if you are wrong and if you learn to move on. But you shouldn't feel responsible for all the problems you already assume you are to blame whenever something or someone gets upset. Don't be responsible for everything. Just as everything is not your fault, not everything is your responsibility. It's okay to be helpful, but don't feel the need to be all the things and do all the things for all the people. This is taking too much of your burden and yourself, limiting those around you. Let others be responsible for themselves and their actions. You shouldn't feel responsible for their happiness. I mean, do you feel responsible for your feelings? Just as you can't make other people happy, don't expect others to make you feel happy or good about yourself. In the same way, they shouldn't make you feel guilty or bad about yourself. You create your own feelings and make your own decisions. People and events may have an effect on your emotions, but they can't dictate them to you. Treat yourself kindly each and every day. People who often feel more comfortable treating themselves in a way they wouldn't consider treating others. Do you criticize yourself with terms like stupid, ugly, loser? Would you use those terms to describe a good friend? Remind yourself that you do deserve to be treated as well as uh, you treat others. Do something nice for yourself, as you would do for others. Either um, in, in thought, give yourself a compliment or an action. Start giving yourself a break. You don't need to be all the things to all the people or please everyone. Give yourself permission to decide you're doing the best you can. Remind yourself when you're doing things well, don't wait to hear from others that you're different that you're not. Choose the brightest side of things each and every day. You can choose how to interpret comments and events. So try for more positive interpretations. If someone says you look good today, don't ask yourself what was wrong with the way I looked yesterday. Accept compliments graciously. Don't ask yourself what you haven't been complimented on in the past or when somebody does compliment you, just be gracious. Look at temporary setbacks as opportunities for growth. 
got to learn to forgive and forget. Try not to hang on painful memories and bad feelings. This is a sunfire way to encourage negative thoughts and bad moods. Your past can control you, and you don't control it. If you can forgive past wrongs and move on, don't forget yet. Forgiving yourself is an important part of this process, too. If you have had a hard time forgiving or forgetting, consider talking through your emotions with a good friend or a counselor, but try not to dwell. It's important to work through tough times, through things, but you can't let the past determine your future. Focus on the things you can do, not what you cannot do. Avoid can't thinking or negative language. If you say something often enough, you may start to believe it. So keep your statements positive, not negative. Don't be afraid to seek help in accomplishing things, but remind yourself that you don't need approval from others to recognize your accomplishments. Focus on what you're able to do. Remind yourself of your capabilities and and positive qualities. Using just one or two of of the things we just discussed on a regular basis will increase your positive self-image and self-esteem. Making these internal changes will increase your confidence in yourself and your willingness to ability to external changes and improve your life in the future. Start today.